On the face of it, not all that much has changed with the brand new M3 iMac that Apple released a couple of weeks ago. But there's a detail that people are overlooking that could make this into more of a performance-based Mac than people are giving it credit for. And as much as I've always loved iMacs, I'm really worried for their future. And I'll tell you why a little bit later on iMac is 25 years old this year, and it's iconic. When I think of Apple, I think of iMac. That's what I see in my mind's eye. And when Apple released the new M3 this year, I'm glad they didn't do anything revolutionary with the design, because that is iMac. Love it or hate it, that chin and the bezels, the white bezels that we've got now, they are part of iMac's design. And I happen to love how it looks. Now, when Scary Fast was on and I was looking at the Macs that have been released. And of course, this is the first time that Apple have ever released all of their chips in one go. You can get the base level M3, M3 Pro and M3 Max. It wasn't the MacBooks that everyone else were raving about and the space black MacBooks that interested me. No, it was the iMac because I've always loved iMac. I've worked on them for 12, maybe 15 years at this point. And when they put the M3 chip in it, I really wanted to get my hands on one. When it was first released in 2021 with the M1 chip, I really, really wanted one, but not running this channel. It was hard to justify buying one. I already had a perfectly good 27-inch iMac that was working okay at that point in time. I couldn't justify buying one of these new colorful playthings with the M1 chip in it. But now it's a different ball game. I wanted to get my hands on this M3 chip. And I tell you what, I got, went for the base level M3 because I wanted to compare it up against my M1 Max. MacBook Pro. It's what I've been working on solidly for this channel for the last year and a half almost now. And it's a well spec machine, that MacBook. It's got 32 gigs of RAM, four terabytes of storage, and it cost me a lot of money, over £4,000. So I decided to go completely the other way this time when I was buying the iMac, and I bought the base level, the cheapest that I could get my hands on. It cost me £1,400 here in the UK. I didn't do anything fancy with it at all. I didn't even go for the fingerprint recognized keyboard. It was the most standard basic machine you can get your hands on. Eight gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. Of course, at that point, you've got very limited I.O. I only got uh, two Thunderbolt ports on the back, and that suits me fine because I didn't expect to be using this Mac on a very regular basis. So I knew what I was getting into, and that was fine with me. A lot hasn't changed about the iMac, to be honest with you. The 4.5K Retina display that gives 500 nits of brightness is still gorgeous. Although I would just warn you, if you work in an office that's got a lot of daylight or you're facing a window, it's very, very reflective. Uh, you can't get an anti-reflective coating on it. So if that's of a concern for you, just bear that in mind. As gorgeous as the display is, it does reflect an awful lot. It's still available in the same six, seven, seven colors that were first released. And it's a lovely looking Mac. The peripherals that come with the iMac, though, that's what I've got called into question. I know you will have heard this by now. Apple, if you remember back at WWDC and that Mother Nature sketch, they make a big play about sustainability. So with their call on sustainability, please explain to me why they would ship a brand new Mac with peripherals that have got the lightning port on. It's inexcusable. I don't care if they got their stock supply wrong and they had a load of those keyboards and mice left in stock. Not our problem. They're creating the very issue and problem they were trying to solve by coming round to USB-C on everything. So here we are with a brand new machine, still on Lightning. I can forgive Apple a lot, but I really can't forgive them that. And being that base level entry iMac meant that I had to be really focused on what apps I was putting on there. I didn't want to bloat it out with anything I didn't think I was going to use. But the first thing that went on there, and it was always going to be the first thing that went on there, was Clean My Mac for Macport. I've been using Clean My Mac for six, maybe seven years now, and it's on all of the Macs that I own and use. And it must have saved me thousands. It really must have saved me thousands. It's the way it looks after your SSD. It cleans up your RAM, cleans up your CPU, and it just deletes old files. It will warn you of large files that need deleting. And it gets rid of apps. I love the way it gets rid of apps that you're not using properly. It cleans them out from your hard drive and your system completely. It's so simple to use. It just sits in the menu bar at the top of your Mac. Occasionally, it will remind you to run it. But I kind of got into a habit now of running it a few times a week anyway. It just makes your Mac feel like day one. It keeps it running so fast and so clean. Now, a couple of weeks ago, my YouTube channel got attacked. Uh, and I nearly had some issues with being... Uh, the victim of cybercrime. One of the things that helped me get past that was the malware checker 
that you can run in Clean My Mac. Now, I'm not saying that was the only reason I got away with it. I had a few other precautions in place, but certainly having that to run and check on a daily basis, which I did do for a couple of days after the attack, was great peace of mind. And I can let you into an exclusive little offer as well. If you use my affiliate link, you can go and get Clean My Mac right now. But coming up on Black Friday, which this year I think is Friday the 24th of November, believe it or not, MacPort are giving a massive 30 percent off of Clean My Mac. You hardly ever see a premium app like that with such a big discount. But this coming Black Friday, 24th November, use my link, head on over there, save yourself a huge amount of money and also keep your Mac running like new. It really is an essential app to have on any of your Macs. After I'd installed Clean My Mac, the other apps I put on there straight away were from Creative Cloud. I'm a big Adobe user. I edit all of these videos in Premiere Pro, my podcast that I host with Alex from Alex Giving Tech. That's always edited in Adobe Audition. So the four apps that needed to go on straight away after Clean My Mac were Premiere Pro, Adobe Audition, Lightroom, and Photoshop. All of those are used in making videos and podcasts. I use Lightroom a lot for making thumbnails. The images normally go in there first, then I pop them into Photoshop to finish up. But I'm not one for geek bench testing or anything like that. I rather use those real life apps that I use and I think you might use as well. So I loaded 20 or 30 photos on this base level iMac into Lightroom. And you know what? It did it in a breeze. I put some presets on there, exported them, and it is working so fast. The same is true with Photoshop. I put a multi-layer document into Photoshop and it was almost as if I was working on my M1 Max MacBook Pro. The speed that they've bought on the uh, Apple chips from M1 to M3 is astounding. As I say, that's why I wanted to get the base level M3 chip to check out against this highly specced out M1 Max MacBook that I've been working on. Now, I've only been using it for a couple of days, so it's not fair to say that I've put it through all of its testing, but so far, it seems really, really good. And apps open up ever so quickly. They definitely open up quicker on this M3 machine than they do on my M1 Max. Spec-wise, it's actually very, very similar to the original 2021 iMac. It comes in the same seven colors, exactly the same seven colors. I went for blue, as you can tell. Uh, you've got the same four performance cores and the same four efficiency cores. You do get one more GPU core now, so you get eight GPU cores and eight CPU cores. The speaker system is exactly the same. It sounded good before and it still sounds good now. It's spatial audio ready, it's Dolby Atmos enabled. You've got wide stereo sound. It gives out a reasonable thump of bass and it's plenty loud enough if you're using it at home or in an office. The camera is the same 1080p camera for FaceTime calls. There is no center stage, which is surprising given the market that this was originally aimed at. And they say that the three mic setup is the equivalent of studio mics. Well, you're listening to me on a studio mic at the moment. Have a listen to what it sounds like on the internal mics on the M3 iMac. Apple said that the three mic array on this iMac gave you studio quality mics. Well, you be the judge. I'm in a studio. <laughs> How did the mic sound? At the top of the video, I mentioned that there was a little secret, a little bit of secret sauce, that the even the base level M3 iMac is packing. It could make it more of a performance machine, and certainly from what I've seen over the last couple of days, it seems to be working. Apple announced it at the Scary Fast event, and it was dynamic caching, which was a phrase that had some of us scratching our heads a little bit, but it's kind of been explained now over the last couple of weeks. Dynamic caching is a feature that allows M3 chips to only use the precise amount of memory that a particular task needs, and it allows the CPU to have a more efficient memory allocation. And I'm guessing that's what's been going on this week when I've been using those, those stress testing apps I mentioned, Lightroom, Photoshop, Audition, and certainly Premiere Pro. I even took some ProRes log footage out of the iPhone and loaded it into Premiere, and this base-level iMac handled that without breaking sweat. I didn't hear a fan. It's been a real surprise, and I thought it might be. But as much as I love iMac, and I always have, I'm really worried about its future. When it was released 25 years ago, it was filling a void. It was making up for a gap that was in the market. It was an all-in-one, easy to use desktop. You didn't be, need to be some computer nerd to understand it or use it. You could just put it on your desk and get to work with it. And of course, it's always been a great looking machine and a great looking design. But that gap isn't there anymore. I think this year, the class of 23 Max is about as near perfect as we've ever had 
Of course, the 13 inch MacBook Pro with the touch bar, that's now been dropped, which means that you can get into an iMac or get into Macs rather for as little as 650 pounds if you buy an M2 Mac mini, which is a hell of a great machine. And then you can go all the way through to 12 and a half thousand pounds with a fully kitted out Mac Pro. Of course, we've just now got the M3 MacBook Pros as well. You can buy those in 14 and 16 inch MacBook Airs, the M1 MacBook Air. It was class leading and it's still available now. It's that good. Apple don't see a reason to drop it. And that's a hell of a machine. And in the MacBook Air range now, you've also got the 13 and 15 inch M2 MacBook Air. I love using my MacBook Air. They're great machines. So I mean, it's such a great array now, such a great range. Apple have really got it now. Unlike with iPads where they seem confused and bloated, with the Macs, they've got it absolutely spot on. Of course, we've got displays too. Uh, there's rumors that we might be getting a larger display next year, but these stories that we're gonna get a larger iMac, a 27 inch iMac, an iMac Pro, I, you know, I just don't see it. There isn't the need there for it. There's barely a need for the iMac anymore. You could just as easily buy an M2 Mac mini and put it with a studio display. Okay, it's technically not an all-in-one, but it's not far off. So I think the iMac is in a very perilous position. Certainly the larger and the uh, iMacs and iMac Pros, there's definitely no need now with Mac Studio and Studio Display. That gap in the market is taken. So um, as much as I love iMacs, I am worried about their future. Oh, and I just wanted to say thank you as well. Over the last couple of weeks, you've been really, really kind to me in uh, subscribing and dropping me some lovely messages as well. And it means the world to me. You know that I try to reply to every single message and I've had so much, so much support over the last couple of weeks. It's meant the world to me. So if you've come across this video for the first time and you're enjoying the content, Subscribing makes an awful difference. And don't forget, if you do subscribe, turn on notifications as well, because a lot of folks that are subscribing aren't turning on notifications. I want you to have those notifications on. So the moment I upload, and I tend to upload once a week, uh, I want you to be the first to know. But if you've subscribed recently, or if you're watching this video and you're enjoying it, that subscription to a channel my size, I've only got two and a half thousand subs. I want the channel to grow. I love making these videos for you. And I want to carry on making as much content as I can. I've got some great plans. All I need is your help. If you want to drop a super thanks, that's fantastic. But just by subscribing and sharing makes an awful difference to a channel of my size. So thank you once again for all the support you've been showing me recently. So I've only been using the M3 MacBook Pro, as I said, for a couple of days. But so far, it's really, really impressed me. I'll be using it more heavily over the next couple of weeks and putting it through its paces a little bit more. The speed that Apple are moving forward with Apple Silicon is just amazing. This is a base level 13, 1400 pound iMac, and it's kind of holding its own against a 4,000 pound M1 Max MacBook Pro. I'd love to know if you're thinking of getting an M3 Mac, and is it gonna be a MacBook or an iMac? How I tempted you with the iMac? Because if you like iMacs, I don't think you should hang around for too long. I'm not saying their days are numbered, but I don't think they're gonna be around forever. I really hope you've enjoyed just having my thoughts on the on the range of Macs we've got at the moment on M3 and on the iMac. I'd love to know if you've got your hands on one, what you've made of yours so far. Thank you so much for watching. I'll leave another couple of videos you to have a look at at the end of this one and I'll be back next week with another video. Thanks for watching.